Hi there, today we're gonna to be working on changing the primary fuel filter in a Yanmar 3GM 30F motor. We'll also be inspecting the secondary fuel filter. Let's take a look at how the fuel system works. The fuel comes up this fixed line into the primary fuel filter. Sometimes people uh, refer to these as the Raycor because Raycor is a provider of these uh, fuel filters that is very common. Um, the, Fuel is drawn into this filter system. From there, it is filtered by the element and passes out through a second fuel line. The fuel line passes out into the engine where it enters an assembly. Follow the next step is a lift pump or a butterfly pump, and we'll talk about that more later. Then to the secondary fuel filter. And then finally, around into the high pressure fuel system where the fuel is fired into the cylinders. It's often said that what a diesel motor needs to operate is fuel, fuel, and fuel. Our goal today is to uh, remove the old filter and put on the new one without introducing any air into the system. Because if a, if a diesel motor has fuel and air incoming coming into the cylinders, it won't operate properly. So for the basic uh, parts that I'm using, I've got a clean filter this is a uh, Parker Raycor R20P. 20 refers to the number of microns for um, material that's filtered. So this filter will let through anything that is 20 microns or smaller. Um, 20 microns, a micron is one one thousandth of a millimeter. Um, I've also got a, gal a gallon of clean diesel that's helpful for the bleeding process. And then a couple of 3M uh, oil absorbent um, rags to use uh, to clean up, avoid any messes. To make things easy on myself, my goal is to keep as much air out of the fuel system as possible as I change the filter. So my first step is to shut off this valve for the line that leads back to the fuel tank to prevent the uh, fuel from uh, dropping back down into the fuel tank and putting air into this line when I remove the filter below. My next step is to remove the old filter. If things are going as planned, this should be uh, attached hand tight and I should be able to unscrew it. I've got my oil absorbent pad to help defray any mess. So this device serves two purposes. There's the filter on top. It also is a water separator. If there was water in the system, it would appear down here in this uh, globe um, and appear differently. The water would sink to the bottom, the diesel rises to the top. Um, I, fortunately, I haven't had a problem with water in my fuel system. My boat stays in the San Francisco Bay for 12 months of the year, and I don't have a lot of problems with condensation uh, in, the, in the fuel system. So, so far so good. So the next step is I need to remove the water separator from the bottom of the old filter. And I'm using a bucket to do that to capture the uh, diesel that was trapped in the old filter. Another alternative would have been to drain it out through one of these holes, but um, today we're just going to recycle this diesel or turn it into a um, oil change facility where it can be disposed of properly. So there's some uh, residue in the bottom of the um, water capture vessel, and, and that's worth noting, and probably a good demonstration of, for why it's a good time to change this filter. I've scraped the residue out of the bottom of the filter as best I could. I used a, uh, a Revlon emery board. I found this to be a very valuable tool to throw in my uh, toolbox here on the boat um, to scrape out small uh, amounts of gunk. Let's open up the new filter here. Again, using the emery board tool. And there are a couple of, there's one really important component in here, which is the The O-ring set, let's look at each one. So the new filter comes with two O-rings. The red O-ring goes at the bottom. The black O-ring goes at the top. It's important that these fit well because the system won't work properly if there's any air that gets uh, that is admitted into the system. It has to be airtight. So these um, O-rings are very important. I've reassembled the bottom of the assembly here with the red O-ring in between. But now my new filter is empty. So if I reattach it to the um, filter head uh, this way, I will have to pump out, clear all of this air, bleed all of this, the air in this filter out of the system. And that will be time consuming and frustrating. 
So this is the first time when having a gallon of clean fuel on hand comes in handy. Next, I will reattach the fuel filter housing. I've taken a light uh, amount of fuel and greased the O-ring that will connect the filter to the head of the housing. So that's the primary fuel filter reattached. There's still some air in the top here, and we're gonna deal with that a little bit later. The next step is we're going to remove the secondary filter, which is a Yanmar specific item. And that is located here on the uh, port side of the engine um, in this small uh, canister. And we will probably need to use a pair of pliers to unscrew um, the nut that holds it onto the engine. So we just only needed a little bit of encouragement from the uh, channel lock pliers to get this guy moving. Now this, this little pot that I'm holding is full of fuel. So keep that in mind. You don't want to drop it um, into your engine uh, bay unless you'll, you're ready for a big mess. I've got a couple of those 3M towels down below. So that should uh, alleviate or capture most of these drips. So here's that cup that I've just removed with some nice clean diesel fuel in it. Um, and the filter itself is still attached um, to the engine. So this is the filter element from the, uh, from the secondary filter. This is a Yanmar specific part. Um, and the part number details are And you can see this is relatively clean. The service, the recommended service time for this um, is, I think it's 200 hours or 250 hours. Um, this, I, I estimate that it's only, I've only operated my engine for about uh, 70 to 80 hours since I changed this the last time. So given that I don't see any dark buildup um, and any other obvious problems with this filter, it's gonna go right back on and won't be replaced in this uh, service cycle. Um, if you wanted to, you could uh, you could rinse this off in clean diesel and take a, a, a soft bristled toothbrush and maybe scrub out the um, the grooves in the filter, but I don't think that's necessary today. If you consider these two filters for a second, uh, it's worth noting that the same volume of fuel moves through both of them. They both work the same way. There's a fabric membrane uh, inside the filter through which the fuel passes before exiting to the next step. And so you can see how much more filtering capacity the primary filter has than the secondary. I really think of this as like a backup, a sort of, oh my gosh, if something terrible happens, this filter should really do be doing the vast majority of the work. And that's why it's so important to keep it changed uh, on a regular basis. So next I'll slide the secondary filter back up into the housing. And now I'm gonna try to begin to screw the housing back on, still filled with the clean fuel. So now I've got the secondary filter canister back on to the engine. Um, I did manage to spill a little bit of fuel here and there. I've used a number of these 3M rags and I'll clean up afterwards. I don't want my boat to smell like a truck stop. Um, and some of that spillage is unavoidable. So now I've got air trapped here in the primary filter and I've got air trapped here in the secondary filter. And if I just tried to run the engine like this, it wouldn't work at all. So my next step is to begin the process to bleed the system of air. I'm going to start closer to the fuel tank and move towards the cylinders. So the way this works for the primary filter is it has a built-in suction pump. We unscrew this plastic knob at the top and there's a brass piston inside uh, and the integral pump. Now in order to bleed the air, we need to give the air someplace to go. There's a bleeder nut at the back of the housing. Let's take a look. First, we want to reopen this valve from the filter so that uh, when we begin to bleed the air, new fuel can flow into the system from the tank. So here's my bleeder nut at the rear. I'm gonna open this up just a scotch, enough to let air pass out, and then I start pumping. And I'll know that I've gotten most of the air out when fuel 
uh, red when fuel starts to seep out from the bleeder nut. And this can get a little tricky as sometimes the fuel will leak out of the uh, suction pump as well. Uh, I think I've removed all the air from the system at this point, and so I'm going to go on to the next step, which is to bleed the secondary valve. I'm going to close up this uh, this bleeder nut next. So here's the top of the secondary filter housing. You can see there are two visible nuts, a larger one and then a smaller one in the back. I think in theory the, the uh, backmost um, bolt or, uh, would be the one you would want to use as a bleed screw, but in practice either, I found that either one works and this one is uh, far more accessible. So I'm going to work to crack this open a little bit and then go on to the butterfly pump. So I was having trouble accessing the, the bolt with my screwdriver there. A 13 millimeter short wrench also works well. So this is open and, and loose now. Here's a look at the butterfly uh, valve pump on the GM motor. Um, there's, a, there's a lever that you, you can pump with your finger. Two things to note about the butterfly pump are first that uh, it will only work in the last 10 to 15% of the, of the movement of the lever valve. So if it feels like you're not doing anything, uh, you're only gonna be operating at the very end of the throw, at which point you should meet with some small resistance and feel a pump sensation as it pushes fuel through. Uh, the other one is that I was told by a, a Yanmar mechanic that if you're not getting any resistance at all and you think you have fuel that should be getting served to the pump, then you may need to rotate the, um, the crankshaft a little bit in order to reorient or bring a new position on so that the pump will work. That's a little bit mysterious to me, but evidently that can help if your butterfly pump is not working. So here we go, pumping away. And I see some air bubbles rising from the secondary filter. And when I see only fuel squirting out, then I'll know I have bled all the air out of the system up until that point. So good, now no more bubbles and just fuel squirting out of that bleeder nut at the secondary filter. Tighten that back up with the 13 millimeter wrench. Now there's one final place where the low pressure side of the fuel system may need to be bled. The fuel comes out of the secondary filter on this line and comes across the front of the engine. And you can see there's a, uh, there's a bolt here with a, that can be operated with a wrench or with a screwdriver. And this is also a bleed point. So I'm gonna to try to bleed this a little bit before we try to turn the, uh, turn the engine over. So to bleed at this point, I'm gonna use the small butterfly valve uh, pump again. And hope to see fuel come out of this uh, nut that I've loosened. All right, now with the nut open a little more, let's see if we can get some um, fuel coming out of this nut. Open it up a little bit more. A little more, a little wider open. And we hear some air hissing out. You can see some bubbles there. We'll hit the lever again. Still bubbles. And it looks like pretty much just fuel now. So that's good news. That's it. Uh, cold start, first try. Change the fuel filters, bled it properly. Boom, started right up. Uh, this is a 1990 motor. It's lasted over 30 years. I hope it lasts another 20 more. And you can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you just might find you get what you need.